Welcome to my trading technique DVD. In this DVD, I'm going to teach you what I've learned and how I accomplished my trading goals. But before we get started, you need to read through this disclaimer. You may pause this video to read and understand that I'm not a financial advisor and that everything I do is for entertainment and educational purposes. My name is Stephen Ducks. I originally come from Chongqing, China. For people who have heard about me only know that I have turned 27,000 into 1.2 million in trading profits within a year. However, to give you more background on me, here's my little bit story. Currently, I'm a student who study engineering as my major and accounting as my minor. Because of my study, I deal with a lot of calculating, organizing, and analyzing data all the time. I then use what I've learned in college and apply them to the stock market. I'm also a huge gamer. Strategy games are my favorite of them all. In order to win those games, you must always have a counter strategy to be your opponent. Thus, I like to think this same process can be applied into the market. The excitement you get once you have defeated your opponent is the second to none. This is exactly how I feel whenever I turn profits into a trade. I'm competing with a thousand unknown opponents, and I'm one of the few traders that walked away with a win. Remember, 90% of traders lose money in the market. I came from a middle class family like most people. My parents were always against the stock market. I've studied the Chinese market in the past. But the max it moved per day was 10%. If it reached the maximum level during the current trading day, the market will stop and will reopen the, net the following day. There is not that much room to make money if you only get maximum 10% per day. I remember in my high school in the economy class, my teacher taught me how to save $1 million of your entire life. That sounds great, but I always wonder how people make millions on a monthly basis. That's the life I wanted. I'm always curious what method they use to make that kind of money. My parents thought trading in the stock market was a losing game. We even had a huge argument about it. So I told them I wasn't playing the stock market and, that, and the idea was completely erased from my thoughts. Unknown to my parents, I began to practice in the market anyway. My parents still have no idea about my trading profits yet. I'm sure if I told them now, they would be surely approved, but I'm not that type of person that would enjoy proving my parents wrong. I'm sure I will share everything with them in the near future. I think when my parents were trading the stock market, they don't, have a, they don't have enough knowledge. They don't have a mentor. And also the world is changing. So the method is evolving that stock market is actually, there's an edge for the stock market to trade into. So that's why I got into this game. But if you don't know what to do, it's always a losing game. That's how I think that's how my parents lost a lot of money in the stock market. At the beginning of 2016, I was convinced by a friend to get into trading. At first, I was trading ETF without any knowledge in the market. The only thing I had was advice from my friend. I often asked him when would be a good time to buy or sell. Although my friend was only trying to be helpful, it proved not to be. This taught me the very first rule of trading, which is don't follow anyone's trade or alerts. Following alerts is a strategy that will cause more financial losses in the long run. You must learn how to be self-sufficient to be successful in the stock market. At the beginning of 2016, I was convinced by a friend to get into trading. At first, I was trading ETF without any knowledge in the stock market. The only thing I had was advice from my friend. I often asked him, when would be a good time to buy or sell? Although my friend was only trying to help be helpful, he proved to be wrong. This taught me the very first rule of trading, which is don't follow anyone's trade or alerts. Following alerts will cause more financial losses in the long run. You must learn to be self-sufficient to be successful in the stock market. In those few weeks, all I traded was XIV, 
and UVXY, they didn't have that much volatility and they were too unpredictable for me to profit. Although a month and a half, I felt I needed some kind of guidance. And then I went to the internet and found Team Sykes. After I joined the challenge, I was learning all the basics. I was starting trading. I don't have any disciplines. I made a lot of mistakes and I was trying to improve from my mistakes. At first, I was very skeptical about this whole penny stock trading. Soon after I did some research on my own, I decided to give it a try and bought the one of his DVD. I found that was very easy to understand. Just by watching the DVD, I began to understand the chart patterns. I subscribed to the stocks to trade, started watching stock up by my own. I began to track and study patterns and got a good idea how market moves. After a few weeks of trading, the results came out pretty good. Then I decided to join Team Challenge. That was the beginning of my trading journey. After I joined Team Challenge, I was going through video lessons by video lessons, watching every single one of them and taking detailed notes. The key to learn is that you have to combine the knowledge that you learn from other people as well as your own experience in the stock market. Don't be hesitant to research several different strategies and see which suits you the best. I started trading penny stocks with some tutorial. I had some decent wins but I didn't have a discipline. I let winners become losers and I let small losses become big losses. Once I become exhausted with having a lack of discipline, I began tracking and building my own database. There were a few reasons why I built a database. First, the strategy is currently working in the stock market. Second, good database will build confidence and help control emotion in a trade. The most important thing is to focus on your own process, recognize your own strengths and weaknesses are. You have to improve day by day. You only can bring the success to yourself through practice, patience, and discipline. When I'm trading, it was a pure bliss. I was seeking trading knowledge like there was no tomorrow. I had to also work and improve my English along learning the market. I had difficulties with language. It was a translation problem after translation problem until I eventually understood. There was always a challenge when you're entering something unfamiliar, but you must push through it. Hard work does pay off, and if I can do it, I know you can do it as well. I stayed very consistent and pushed myself to learn and study patterns. I always thought the trend and shapes and the chart happens for a reason. By studying countless charts, I noticed patterns, then I started to track specific pattern performance. Since I'm really good remembering charts and tracking them, I was learning nonstop. I was trying different patterns out and begin combined strategy to get a higher winning percentages. I was also exploring other strategies as well. Most of the strategy had high winning percentage, but I had no risk management, so my losses were bigger than the wins. Once I started taking those losses, you become very emotional and start to over trading and losing even more money. It was a very bad habit I had to break. There's some mistakes that I made along the way. The first, I was everywhere. There was no specific strategy to focus on. I don't have a specific strategy that I can track on a database, so I was everywhere. And if you are distracted by multiple strategies, you can't win because you are not focused on the high winning percentages pattern. Second, I didn't have a plan before I get into a trade. Once the stock went against me, all I did it was increase my risk level and hesitate to cut in my losses. And that will lead to a big loss. Third, if I'm on a winning streak, I automatically increase my share account and only thought about how much I will win instead of how much I could lose. The market is never guaranteed, but after a year of trading, I do have a good idea of what I'm doing. I completely understood each pattern and strategies that fits any style of trading. I only focus on the ones that fit my certain criteria. Through detailed research, I have found few strategies that prove to have 60 to 90% win rate. Although these strategies carry those great odds, you still can't 
ever go all in on one single trade, regardless of the winning percentage, it's 10 to 20% chance you will lose. And that's a good way to wipe out an entire account. Always think about the worst case scenario before going to any trades. Using leverage and going all in is something that will destroy your confidence and wipe out your entire account. Fortunately for me, I have never blown up on my account. Although at the beginning of my trading career, I did become a little bit overconfident. I kept sizing and adding more and more shares when the stock went against me. I remember I was being down 58,000 unrealized in a $65,000 account. I held stocks until the stock came all the way back and ended with a profit. This type of situation typically happens when you don't stick to your plans and don't respect your risk level. I was very very lucky that time, but next time I probably won't be that lucky again. I hope my experience will give you some kind of idea about how important it is. Another real life example was a stock called DRYS. The stock has been diluting and adding shares into current supply. Because of lacking demand of the stock, the stock just keeps dropping which caused more short sellers starting attacking the stocks. One morning, stock hot, one, one morning DRS was halting and released some kind of news and it stopped dilution. There were no way for you to get out of a stock until it gets unhalted. If I remember correctly, the stock hung halted around 1.7, halted around I remember the stock was halted around 1.7 and, uh, and unhalted around $6. If you are sure, you will be down 300% of your money. If you are all in with all your money, you will not be just losing your entire account. You will also own your brokerage money. I was hungry for improvement. My wins are consistent, but, but my wins were very consistent, but like previous I just said, my losses overshadows my profits. My profits were around 1 or 2k, and losses were around 5 to 7k. I then started to add in risk management into my strategy. I narrowed down my focus to focus on specific patterns, adding maximum losses. Remember, if you are not familiar with the pattern or strategy, never enter that trade. I modified my mental strategies and, and improved them a lot by using statistics. Understanding what other people are thinking and create a way to counter them in order to get maximum profits are the best entries. Here's a couple reasons why I wanted to create this DVD. First, I believe there's a big problem with the educational system. I have learned so much information and that was so unnecessary and probably never will be applied into my real life. What I want to do is to make a market educational video that gets straight into the core information about trading, which will hopefully not only save your time, but make your studying experience more efficient. Second, I want to show it is possible to achieve anything if you put enough time and effort into it. I'm a Chinese student and English is not my first language. I often have to read through news and financial statements in English, which proved to be very challenging in the beginning. Over time, I had overcome all those difficulties and I believe you can do it as well. The market is difficult, but if you apply certain rules and strategy, you can be successful. Remember, it will take hard work and dedication on this journey you are about to take on. Also in this DVD, there is room to improve my strategy. I want to help others by speeding up their learning curves. Once you have learned my strategy, you can improve on them and make them to your own. Take what you need from and implement to your own strategy to make yourself a better trader. That's exactly what I did through my other mentor. I've spent countless hours of research, video lessons, and webinar. I took what I saw to be helpful for me and added them to my own strategy. That I was very comfortable with. From there, I saw my trading experience start to change in for the better. This DVD will include what I use for technical analysis and my unique perspective of analyzing charts. Different risk management for beginning, intermediate, and experienced trader. There will be four main short and four long strategies that I use every single day with detailed specific rules for each strategy. There will be five examples for each strategy and show you the clear methods what is used on this specific strategy. For the last part, I will be showing you how to track and calculate your winning percentages, how to manage your risk in different patterns and to maximize your profits and minimize your losses. I always like to keep things simple. I use support and resistance only and use volume to judge how heavy the resistance and support is. 
Here's some of my brokers I use. I use Interactive Broker at the beginning of my trading journey. They have cheap commissions and they have really fast execution. If you use their TWS platform, most of the time they don't have shares to short and for heavy volume traded stock, especially on low flow. But for beginner, you don't want to go short anyway. I highly recommend if you are a beginner. Another broker I use is Centerpoint. They specialize to find shares to short. However, their borrow fees are really expensive. So it's important for you to make your money short selling. The fees and commission will add up and eat your account alive if you are not winning on short selling. If you are a long US citizen, you can open up a trade zero account. They don't enforce date pattern day trader rule and they have really good execution. They also have the same cleaner firm at Centerpoint called Vision Security. Here's some good reading material that I recommend for beginners also. Momo Trader, which explains detailed tips, tricks, and strategies from some of the best traders in the market. It features extensive interview with 10 top traders who find stocks that move and capitalize on that momentum. Beyond Real and Fear, which outline understanding of behave finance, which outline understanding of behavior, finance, and the psychology of investing. It challenged the most fundamental assumption about investing and psychological traps that may keep you from achieving your trading goals. It explains behavior finance and application of psychology to finance behavior to help avoid losses caused by human error. The stock operator it is a major source of stock trading learning material for new thing and experienced trader. So what is the stock market? The stock market is where share of public listed company are traded. They are traded by a group of buyers and sellers which represent ownership claims on the business. They flow shares to the public to raise capital from their own company. One investor buys shares from another investor at the market price or whatever price both parties agreed upon. The stock exchange facility and stock broker to trade company stocks and their own security. The stock can only be traded if it's listed on the exchange. What is penny stock? A penny stock is typically traded outside of major market exchange at a relatively low price, has small market cap. An OTC penny stock is a common stock that is usually valued at less than $1, which causes them to be highly speculative. Or OTC bulletin board and pink sheets usually have a really small market cap However, there are some large companies based on their market capitalizations that trade below $5 per share on the main exchange. The typical penny stocks in a small company with highly liquid and speculative shares. Penny stocks are more suitable for investors with a high tolerance for risk. They typically have more volatility, which allows for potential having their higher rewards, but also having higher risk. Penny stocks are often growing companies with limited cash and resources. What is market cap? Market cap is generally divided into subsections. Large cap stocks has a market cap over 10 billion or greater. Mega cap has market cap over 200 billion or greater. These tend to be stable companies that dominate the industry. They are more stable during the market downtrend, but the company are generally very, very slow in moving in terms of price. Mid cap stocks has a market cap between $2 billion to $10 billion, tend to be more risky than large caps but less risky than small cap, they tend, to be, they tend to offer more growth potential than large caps. Small cap stocks has a small market cap less than $2 billion. The good one offer the strongest growth potential have more risk or failure, they tend to be have more volatile, underperform in recession but tend to overperform in bull market. Micro cap is the market cap between $50 million to $2 billion. And ultra market cap is less than $50 million. Having the highest risk reward in profile in terms of volatility, the opportunity for extreme growth exists as well as the opportunity to lose your investment by risking of failure, most likely things to happen. My comfort zone is one zero to 500 million, I never trade large cap stocks because in order to make the stock go over 100%, you will 
need another $500 million in trades in a really short amount of time. But in small caps, it will only need $10 million for $10 million stocks to increase 100%. And that can happen in a really short time, even though, even though with, within a day. What does flow mean? The flow means the number of available shares for trading of particular stocks. The flow is calculated by subtracting closely held shares and restricted shares from company total or standing shares. Closely held shares are those owned by insiders, major shareholder and employees, while restricted stocks refer to insider shares that cannot trade it because of temporary restrictions such as public offering. A stock with a small flow will generally be more volatile than stock within a larger flow. What makes low flow stocks move faster? A low flow stock has lower number of shares available of trading. Within fewer available to trade, it all comes down to supply and demand. They tend to be more volatile which allow massive moves to the upside very quickly and positive catalyst. When trading low flow stocks, it is important to look for the liquidity. You don't want to get in stock holding shares that you cannot sell until the right catalyst these stocks do not generally have that much liquidity. What is PDT rule? The PDT is pattern day trader rule applies to a trader who buys or sells particular security in the same trading day and does four or more times in five constructive business days. The rule applies to margin accounts and not cash accounts. In order to pattern day trade, you must maintain an equity balance of at least of 25000 in margin account. If you choose to go over PDT, your, your account will be restricted for three months. So most of the time, I don't. If you're under PDT, you have to practice holding stock overnight. But holding stock, printing stocks overnight will be extremely risky. So be careful for choosing your trades, and that prevents you over trade as also as a beginner. There is no limit to the number of trades if you hold your position overnight. This is a good for small accounts. Within small accounts, you can focus on good long strategies like gap fill, close, and swing trade. What are OTC stocks? Over-the-counter or OTC are security of small companies that cannot meet exchange listing requirements, also known as unlisted stocks. These securities are traded by broker-dealers with negotiating direct directly with one another over a computer network by the phone. As a result, it makes execution a little slower. What is market maker? A market maker is a broker firm that holds shares of a particular stock for trading. Each market maker competes of customer order flow by showing buy and sell quotes from a guaranteed number of shares. Once the order is received from a buyer, they will immediately sell from his own inventory. What are short sellings? Short sellings is borrowing shares from a broker and taking negative positions by selling those shares at one price Borrowing shares from a broker and taking negative positions, selling those shares at one price and buying to cover once the stock price drops. It's the reverse process of taking a long position. How do you borrow shares? You borrow shares from your broker. Once you find the stock that you're interested in and shorting, you must contact your broker and reserve shares. Some stock are ETB or easy to borrow and others are hard to borrow. Hard to borrow shares will have a borrow fees add-on if you have center point or trade zero account. What is PM? What is AH? PM means pre-market. What is pre-market? Buy and sell orders can be executed between 4 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. How long is after hours? Buy and sell orders can be executed between 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at night, Eastern time. Should I trade after hour or pre-market? Volume is particularly low extended hours trading, making the bid ask spreads much larger than normal trading. This makes it harder to get in and out of a position. You also have to know that just because the market isn't open doesn't mean the market moving new stops. Company tends to release big news announcements such as quarterly earnings and toxical financing. Something as minor as a comment on a movie TV show such as CNBC, Fast Money, or Mad Money can move a stock. If you step away from a computer, you could come back with a major headache. What is a paper trading? Paper trading is a similar trading process which inexperienced trader can practice investing without risking real money. It's the best to use a platform to use real-time data to give you the best experience in the market. 
I personally don't suggest paper trading. If you wanna trade and watch the real market, I suggest to trade real, really small so you have your emotion attached into the real market until you can be more and more comfortable with sizing in and sizing out you're using your real money so you can control your own emotion what is a candlestick chart the candlestick chart is a style of financial chart used to describe price movements of a security it displays a high low open and closing price of a security for a specific period that period could be 1 to 15 minutes weekly monthly and yearly the wide part of candlesticks is called real body and tells the investor whether the close price was higher or lower the opening price for a specific period. The candlestick shadow or wick shows high and low and how they compare to the open and close. Once you learn how to use them and they can indicate strong buying pressure, this typically indicates the price is bullish or significantly selling pressure which suggests price is bearish. What is a line chart? A line chart is created by connecting a series of data points together with a line. This is the most basic chart used by finance. The line chart will give you a fairly good idea of where the price of an asset has traveled over a given time frame. Why use candlesticks and not line charts? Some call line chart cheap imitation and candlestick chart is constructed by using the same data as Japanese candlesticks, but displayed it differently. Candlestick charts has become a favorite tool quickly analyzing the movements of potential trend changing in security. This should be no surprise to anyone who has ever used them. Their simplicity of available information makes them fairly easy to understand even for amateur chartists. Although they might be simple, they are still very powerful and valuable price analyzing tool. What is level 2? Level 2, provide, level two provides real-time code from market makers restricted Level 2 provides real-time code from market maker registered in every NASDAQ listed and OTC bulletin board security. Level 2 shows the bid and ask along with the side of stock to be purchased or sold. It provides you with all the available price that market makers and electronic communication networks, which are called ECN, are posting. This gives you visual display of a price range and liquidity at each price level. This information allows trader to determine his or her entry and exit point that assure the liquidity need to complete a trade. Why is level 2 important? Level 2 is important depending on who you ask. Some traders just trade the chart, but other traders rely heavily on level 2. This shows supply and demand of the stock. You must be careful because experienced traders that trade high volume typically hide their position size. It helps you determine which side is stronger and which side is weaker, which may lead to a momentum swing. I personally don't use level 2 that much. I use them for to watch uh, sense by sense if the stock is trying to break it now. Uh, for example, if the stock is trying to break out of this $1 area, if there is 1.10 have a 100k ask, 1.02 have another 100k ask, 1.03 have another 100k. So every sense have a huge ask. That will probably affect me to take my profits or doubting on this breakout will still be successful. But typically I don't pay attention to the level 2 that much. Oh, 80% or 90% focused on the chart. Why is the volume important? Volume is extremely necessary when trading the low flow stocks. Volume is needed to move in and out of positions. You don't want to be caught in a trade with a large amount of shares with absolutely no one to sell them to. You will make it very difficult to exit a trade. A 70% increased stocks price may not be relevant at all if all happens with very little volume. The strength of any price movement is measured primarily by the volume. The volume is also used by technical analysis to confirm trend and chart patterns such as bounce short, parabolic short, and others. Because chart patterns try to predict pivotal movements like reversal without volume represent alongside, this pattern's signal isn't as reliable. What is PE ratio? The PE ratio is the price earning ratio. It's the ratio 
value of the company in that measure is currently share price relatively to its own share per earning. Its ratio for value in the company in that measure is current share price relatively to its per share earning. What is time to sell? Investors use technical analysis technically to forecast price by watching the stock price movement and trading volume. Time and sales is detailed amount of trading activity for particular stocks. It's real-time display for share volume price direction and date or time for each trade shares. Using time and sales is complementary to using charts to estimate share price movement. What is the 52-week high? The 52-week high or low basically is the highest and lowest price that stock has traded during the previous years. Trader tends to show an increase of interest as the price near either the high or low which can sometimes cause 52-week high breakout or breakdown. What is a halt? A trading halt is a temporary suspension in trading, usually in anticipation of a news announcement or to correct an order imbalance. You cannot either exit your position during a halt. Exchange may halt a stock at any given time if it suspects unusual activity related to the stock price, such as an unconfirmed rumor. Where do I find the biggest percent gainers? I personally use Stocks to Trade. If you use your platform scanner to find this as well, it's on the top left, which I will show a live example on it. What are scanner? A scanner is a tool trader to find stocks to trade in certain criteria, such as the biggest percent gainer, 52 week high, or new highs or new low. What is support and resistance? Support level is where a stock price tends to find support as it fails. The price is more likely bounce to the upside rather than break through this level. If it breaks support level, the stock can continue to drop until it finds another support level. If you are a trader, you must get familiar with this technical analysis early on. What is resistance? Resistance level is the opposite of support. It's where the price tends to find trouble breaking through on the upside. It's more likely to bounce off this level and drop in price. If it breaks the resistance level, the stock could continue to the upside until it meets the new resistance level. What is considered a heavy resistance? Heavy resistance can be either using high volume when shares are heavily traded, roughly 20 million or up, or consolidated resistance when stock has consistent period of high resistance. It can be one day, one week, one million, six million or a year resistance. What is a breakout? A breakout is when the stock moves outside of resistance area, followed by increased volume and volatility. The resistance is the access level of supply for a stock at a particular level and creates amount of supply that is more than demand and store upward movements in price. Once the market absorbs the surplus level of supply, resistance is usually breached with a quick upward movement. This movement is called a breakout. What is consolidating? Consolidation is sometimes considered a period of indecision, which ends when the price of a stock moves above or below that price range. Where do you find news on a stock? You can use different scanners to locate news such as Stocks to Trade and Finviz. Most of the trading platforms have news as well, so make sure whatever broker you decide to have a platform that has news feature. You can also check Yahoo Finance, which should be on every trader's computer homepage. What are SEC filings? A SEC filing is a financial statement submitted to the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission. This form gives quick analysis for a company performance and activities, which include at the market offering, warrants, balance sheets, cash flow statements. It's very important to understand these filings. This filings can determine which side of the trade you should be on. Where do you find SEC Finance? You find SEC Finance at sec.gov.com. What are earnings? The amount of profit a company is making during a specific period called earnings. They, they are releasing quarterly. How does earnings affect the stock price? Good earnings can cause the stock to rise because the investors see the company is growing and will be willing to invest. Bad earnings can cause investor to sell his or her shares because the outlook of the company could look bad. Because the outlook of the company could be bad. What are warrants? 
Warrants are sold by companies as the way to raise capital, although the company could sell stocks to raise money. The Security Exchange Commission regulates the number of shares company is allowed to use. Some companies will issue warrants as the way to sweeten the deal during taking over or restructuring. What is ATM? ATM stands for at the market as an at the market offering is an ATM. A listed company sells newly issued shares incrementally into existing trading market through a broker dealer or at the market price. You can find the warrants and ATMs by checking company SEC filings. What is secondary public offering? The issuance of new stock for public sale from a company has already made its initial public offering, which is called IPO. Usually, this kind of public offering are made by companies wishing to refinance to raise capital for growth. Often, the company that issued the shares holds a large percentage of the stock it issues. There's some psychology you need to understand before getting to trading. I use psychology as part of my strategy because all patterns are based on psychology. To understand a pattern completely, you have to think why does this pattern work or what psychology is behind it. After a bunch of studying on my own, I have figured out there is some key points that will either make short sellers stressed or make most people panic when they are going long. When you are trying to learn going long or short, you have to understand both sides. If you are going long, you, can, you want to take advantage of the short side, get stressed and covering. If you are short, you want to take advantage of the long side to be able to see the points where they are going to be panic or starting selling their position. And that will give you better executions. The understanding of both sides will give you a great advantage in trading. Risk management. Risk management plays a big part in trading. No matter what kind of methods you are using, typically I use risk level and the share amount to calculate my position size. Risk management also relates to each pattern winning percentage, as well as I track each individual patterns on my own. After I get a large enough sample size, you are not going to make home runs and one, in one trade and get rich quickly. You have to focus on long-term consistent profit. If a pattern has a decent winning percentage, combined with correct risk management, that will give you a higher odds of winning knowing your odds success on each trade that you will take will eliminate your emotion from the most part. When trading, those two factors will help you consistently to be a better trader. After you build a decent amount of data, you can use the average winning percentage and set up a amount of percentage of your account to trade in the stock market. For example, if the winning percentage is around 70% on your database, you can risk bigger in your account. If the average winning percentage is 50%, you can risk less percentage in your account. So that depends on what's on your database. Use the statistics to judge your position size. When going to a trade, you have to know the maximum loss of percentage, general loss percentage, general profit taking per percentage. When you're short a stock, you have to know the maximum percentage. When you're buying a stock, the maximum losing percentage is 100%. So even though the stock drops to zero, if you invest $10, you lose $10. And general losing percentage, which is around 10 to 20%, general profit taking percentage, which is around, it can be infinity. But if you are shorting a stock, then your maximum losing percentage can be infinity. And your general lose percentage can be really, really high. You need to have a really good risk management. If you are short sale of stock, you can lose more than 100%. You can lose 200, 300, 400%. General profit taking percentage, I will say it's typically around 20 to 30%. Sometimes you get lucky and get 50% return. That's really rare. When you are placed in trades, you want to use different risk management. For example, only use set amount of money for each trade you take. There's a couple ways to manage your trades. For example, if your account have $3,000, for me, I will only use $600 for every single trade. Once you are comfortable with the pattern and your skill, and your account has increased, use the percentage of your account to go into your trade. I typically risk 15 to 25% of my account size. 25% will, will be my maximum bet. So continuing without examples, if I have $3,000 account, I would risk 20% of that account. I would only buy or sell $600 worth of stock. Outside of calculating how much risk you should put on into each trade for what is comfortable to you, risk can be also determined by a strategy, depending on the number of samples you have for each pattern that you track. 
By definition of you have been tracking strategy with set stop loss and set target and set patterns, you will have, you will be able to know what are the odds of success and, and how much to bet. Based on past history, you will then use the calculation above to determine how much you were willing to bet against the worst drawdown of this strategy. After you have a solid foundation of how risk management works, you will have to work on how to get the best entry price and not miss a certain play. In the next part of the DVD, I will be introducing all the long and short patterns will explain in detail how to manage your position size in each specific pattern. Here's some, some basics about the stock market. Uh, market opens around 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pre-market opens around 7 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. After it goes on from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. When you are buying a stock for going long, you want to buy low, sell high. When you are shorting, you want to sell high and buy low. Most of the time, you have to borrow shares from your broker, which costs borrow fees. So make sure you can win a lot before the fees can eat your account. There's a couple orders that I typically use. I use limit orders. I barely use market orders. I use stop losses sometimes if I'm not, if I'm not in front of my computer. So limit orders is place your expected fill price either you want to buy or sell a stock, and it will get automatically filled when the stock price reaches to your order or better. Market order it can get executed instantly and will get filled on the stock on the current price. The reason why I don't want to use market order if the volume is not big enough, it can get executed and you will get executed and your execution will be really really bad. Stop loss. When the stock hits your order, it will automatically trigger using market order to cover your positions. The reason why I don't like to use stop losses is because market maker can see your order. Your order will get taken out by the market makers. I never use stop losses. Uh, I use mental stop loss. Once the stock reaches to my mental stop loss, I will manually cut in my losses or manually take in my profits. For scanner, I use stock to trade and use candlestick chart. Uh, I don't use line charts. In Statutory, I had news and tweets all in the same software, so you can see what are people talking on Twitter, what kind of news is going on, and it's, very, it's fairly easy to understand, it's fairly easy to use. Sometimes you have technical issues, but the, the software is very, very new, so you will get better later on. I use Statutory to scan every single day. I use top percent gainer, I use, and I select them from the pre-market volume. So I will give examples of how to scan uh, with a live example. Here I'm going to give a really important lesson about volume. So I judge volume by two different ways. Number one is called individual volume. Number two is called consistent volume. And I will give examples about both of them also. But here is the statistics, statistics about it. So if you are using short strategy or long strategies, most penny stocks charts have individual volume. If you see a volume bar underneath a price, it's around 10 to 10 million count light support or light resistance 10 to 25 million called mid support resistance 20 to 40 million considered to be heavy 40 million plus considered to be super heavy so you can use that kind of resistance or support to judge how strong the support and resistance is and to manage your position size if the stock has trading been trading over a hundred million volume in support or resistance I have never seen some kind of chart can break a hundred million resistance. So I consider that to be unbreakable for now. Consistent resistance means there's a good amount of volume trading around one million to five million volume almost every single day. So that will be using for a one specific pattern that is really, really useful for shorting. And I think that's why consistent volume is important. There's some suggestion for risk management. So if you're a beginner for trading, I always suggest you set a mo use set up money to go into a trade. So if set up maximum loss for yourself. If you have one thousand dollar account, you can't risk over one fifty one hundred fifty dollars. So no matter what the stock happened, if your trade exceeds your maximum loss, then cut your losses because you want to protect your assets before to fight. If you are right or wrong on these stocks, always protect your assets as your priority.
Now, after you advance a little bit, you can use a percentage of your account to go into a trade. I can risk 10% of my account, I can risk 20% of my account, but I wouldn't suggest risking over 50% of your account because you are not giving yourself that much room. That will potentially make your account blow up. And after if you get a little bit more know about trading, you can use risk level and maximum loss to manage your position size. What does that mean? It means if you have a specific risk level and a maximum loss, you can try to approach to your risk level as close as, close as possible so you can have more shares into that trade and more percentage of account into that trade but your maximum loss stays the same. I will give examples about intermediate trade. If you are really, if you are experienced traders, you can use statistics on your side and if you have a clear database, you can use the winning percentage and maximum loss or risk level to manage your position size. The higher percentage of this pattern has, you can risk more money into it. The lower the winning percentage of this pattern has, you can risk lower percentage of account sizing. That's how I typically do when I go into a trade. How to size in? This is something that I always get about because people like to size in in one go. That's something that's, that is not very intelligent because typically you do want to break your position size in parts. And sometimes either you don't want to miss the trace, sometimes your execution won't be good as enough. You need another ad to average up your, your position size. So always break your position in parts and don't try to go into something in one go. That's not very smart. And always leave yourself a back door because market sometimes will prove you wrong. And second, it's okay to add into your loser as long as you stay on your risk level. If, as long as you know where your risk is, what your maximum loss is, you have calculated every single one of your positions and you know everything that will happen, then it's okay to add into your loser. But don't add, in, add into your loser because you think the stock is going to drop or it's, gonna, it's going to break into new highs. Uh, adding into losers emotionally, that will make your account blow up. So avoid account blowing. And when you get into a trading, you want to observe the market as much as possible. You can use that experience, kind of sometimes you have some kind of feeling that will tell you to reduce your share account to size down. So watching the market is definitely very, very helpful for your trading journey. And when you are shorting or when you're going long, you want to buy in the weakness. You don't want to buy in the strength you are chasing. If you are chasing a 200% runner, and that is a very, very stupid thing to do. If you are shorting, you want to short into strength. Don't short into weakness because stock likes to bounce. Stock likes to have a pullback. So if you are shorting very emotionally, you are shorting into weakness and you are shorting them in, with a position size in one go and the next minute the stock bounces and you get, you get more emotional. You got out and the stock dips back again. Then you start to get in, you are getting into weakness. You are getting trapped into that circle again. So always add into strength into weakness, that's the perfect way to go.